GTI Jake here on performance. Today I just want to take a few minutes to talk about why I think the Mark 7 GTI makes such a great daily driver and why it's such a great value as a commuter car that can also double as a track toy, uh, hitting the twisties on the weekends, drag racing, autocross, really an all-in-one car for those who might not have the money or the room to have a dedicated weekend car. So, starting in 2015, they didn't come exactly optioned as they do now. They had a smaller informant system, MIB1. Now they have the second version of that, and the 2018s have an even bigger informant screen. That's pretty good size with Apple CarPlay, which is a really useful feature for a commuter car between that and the phone integrations that make it a safe, you know, car to be talking on your phone and getting things done on your commute, the crash test rating, all that fun stuff. The interior space being sufficient for hauling kids around, which I do. Roof rack on top, the roof box for vacations. But what really makes it a great commuter, in my eyes, is the fun factor. What other car can you get 30 miles to a gallon all week and still take it to the track and run 12s on the weekend in this price range? Your options are pretty limited. So while we're talking about mods, we'll just go over my mod list for those of you not familiar with the car. I uh, started out with all three BFI stage two density mounts. I did just the insert on the transmission and the dog bone mount and the full replacement, which is the only option for the engine mount. The highly hated and often de debated engine open intake with a do-it-yourself intake scoop, just made out of a piece of scrap. And I have a write-up on dimensions if you want to do that yourself. It's a pretty easy project. Uh, my production front mount intercooler kit here, keeping everything cool. Really happy with how that turned out. And so far all the feedback on them has been positive. Uh, this actually isn't the downpipe that I have in production now. This is... It started as a CTS downpipe I got for free. I uh, traded my stock downpipe for it, but it's got all the same mods done to it as the production ones. It's welded into one piece. It has a V-band on the end uh, to connect to the cat back, which is an option, and the 200 cell Flowmaster cat. Uh, it's APR Stage 2 tuned. And I did finish building the rest of the way out with the turbo back. Don't mind what a mess this thing is. Everybody always expects cars to be clean in videos and pictures. It's not the case. I'm busy. It's dirty. It is what it is. But I've got technical topics written on the exhaust as well. The key component there being the vibrant resonator uh, 17950 and finished off with the Borlet Pro XS muffler as you guys have heard in my other videos it's subtle but still loud enough to have some fun when you want to uh, holding all the power down I just did a video reviewing more in depth the DKM stage 3 twin disc which is phenomenal. It's as close to stock as you're gonna get as far as drivability. I mean, class leading torque holding capability, 660 foot pounds, which is way more than the bottom end is actually good for. And these are crank numbers. Uh, a lot of guys get hung up on crank and wheel horsepower numbers. There's a pretty significant difference. So even just an off the shelf stage two tune, will make more torque than most 
stage two quote unquote clutches are rated for. So keep that in mind when you clutch hopping. But overall, between a little stickier Firestone Indy 500 tires, purely just for cosmetics, the wheel spacers, and convenience, the wheel stud kit, all the little things that make it the way it should have came from the factory. Uh, I haven't dynoed it, but roughly estimating it should be about 320 horsepower. That might be a little generous, but definitely over 300 horsepower and about 400 foot-pounds of torque. So I paid $23.5 for the car. I'll be going to the track on Friday, so we'll know what it runs, at least on a slippery, unprepped track. We'll know exactly what it runs in a month when streetcar takeover comes around. And uh, I mean, you're not gonna run in the teens for trap speed and potentially 12 second quarter mile on anything else that's got four doors in this price range. I don't really want to throw out a number on what I have in mods because anybody that follows the channel or uh, I work on the forums knows that I do all the work myself so it's not really a realistic number for you guys as far as what I have total in mods but all things considered you could go out and fill your cart on ECS or BMP tuning or any of those places and buy everything I have you know, with the exception of the stuff that I build, you'd have to go through me. If you do, I appreciate it. And, uh, this is a simple car. It's completely reliable. I trust it to go anywhere. It's quiet. VWR springs don't knock or make noise because they're installed properly. Keyword properly there. There's a lot of people on lower end springs and coilovers have problems with them. We'll get more into that in another video. But I just wanted to give a basic overview of the car and the points of why I think if you're considering a car to do dual purpose or even just leave it stock and enjoy something a little bit more fun than your average commuter car, definitely go out and test drive one of these and you will not be disappointed. They're a ton of fun. And aside from some little known issues that are pretty well covered on the forums as far as the stock clutch not liking to hold a whole lot of extra power, and you could avoid that with a DSG transmission. I drove both. I prefer shifting my own gears, but there's nothing wrong with the DSG. They're a lot of fun as well. And they do hold up better with power. So they're a little bit more money to buy up front. But that kind of equals out when it comes to getting into an aftermarket clutch and or a TCU tune. So thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys would like a video of. And uh, have a good one. Thanks.